हेलो एवरीवन टुडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द अल्ला ओके नाउ द अल्ला इज द मीडियल बोन ऑफ द फोर आर्म एंड इज होमोलगस विद द फेबुला ऑफ द लोअर लिम सो इन रेडियस आई टोल्ड यू दैट द रेडियस वाज होमोलगस विद द टीबिया ऑफ द लोअर लिम सो जस्ट लाइक दैट द अल्ला इज होमोलगस विद द फेबुला ऑफ द लोअर लिम नाउ इट हैज एन अपर एंड विद टू प्रोसेसेस okay this is the olecranon process and this is the coronoid process all right olecranon process and coronoid process now it has an intervening shaft and a lower narrow i mean a narrow lower end okay now the upper end is hook like see you can appreciate this hook like upper end okay this is actually the trochlear notch so the upper end is hook like and this concavity this concavity is facing forwards okay so this is the anatomical position and this concavity will be facing forward all right now the lateral border see this is the lateral border of the ulna i hope it's visible so this is the lateral border or the interosseous border okay the lateral or the interosseous border so this is very sharp and crest like see you can appreciate this crest like is very much prominent now in the lower end it has a pointed stylar process see this is the pointed stylar process in the lower end okay now this stylar process lies posterior medial okay it lies posterior medial to the rounded head of the ulna so which is the head of the ulna this is the head of the ulna so unlike other bones the head of the ulna is present in the lower position okay in radius let me show you the radius so this is the radius see this was the radial head okay it was it was more pro, it was proximal okay but in ulna this is distal it's placed distally the head in humerus as well the head was proximal i mean uh, in the upper end so this is the point to be noted now let's come to the general features okay of the ulna Now, first, let's discuss about the upper end. Now, the upper end presents the olecranon and the coronoid process. So, this is the olecranon process. Okay, this is the olecranon process, and this is the coronoid process. Okay, coronoid process, olecranon process. Okay. Now, it also has two important anatomical landmarks. See, this is the radial notch. Okay. it is also present in upper end and it's placed laterally okay this is the radial notch okay now apart from radial notch it also has this trochlear notch now this concavity is called a trochlear notch okay because it's in relation with the trochlea of the humerus so let me show you the humerus so this is the humerus which i have this is the right humerus now uh, you may appreciate this trochlea see this is the trochlea so this trochlear notch is in relation with the trochlea of the humerus okay so this is how the articulation takes place all right so coming to the olecranon process the olecranon process projects upwards from the shaft so this is the shaft now the olecranon process is projecting upwards see I place it. See, this is projecting upwards. Okay. Now, the olecranon process it projects upwards from the shaft. Okay. Now, let's discuss about the surfaces of the olecranon process. Now, the olecranon process has five important surfaces. See, if I place it in anatomical position and discuss. See, this is the superior surface of the olecranon process. This is the lateral surface of the olecranon process. This is the medial surface of the olecranon process over here. Medial surface. Okay. This is the posterior surface of the olecranon process and this is the anterior surface. Okay. Anterior, superior, posterior, medial and lateral. All right. Now let's come to the anterior surface first. now the anterior surface of the olecranon process is articular it forms the upper part of the trochlear notch okay so it is forming the upper part of the trochlear notch 
Now the posterior surface, see this is the posterior surface of the early coronal process. Now the posterior surface of the early coronal process, it forms a triangular, see this triangular subcutaneous area, which is separated from the skin. This area is actually separated from the skin by a bursa, okay? Now what is a bursa? A bursa is actually a fluid filled space or cavity, okay? Especially on it means it covers the i mean the joints okay because in this area the elbow joint would be there okay now it actually covers the joints to avoid the bones i mean to prevent friction among the bones okay against the bones so this is what's the importance of the bursa okay now that being said now inferiorly see the posterior surface inferiorly it is continuous with the posterior border of the shaft so this border which i am tracing by my hand see this is this was the posterior surface of the olecranon process and if i trace it downwards see this is the posterior border i hope it's clear this is the posterior border of the ulna all right so this triangular area can be traced backwards and downwards and we will find the posterior border of the ulna so that being said now the upper part actually it forms the point of the elbow okay this upper part now the medial surface the medial surface of the olecranon process it is continuous inferiorly with the medial surface of the shaft okay see this is the medial surface of the olecranon process and it's continuous inferiorly with the medial surface of the shaft see this is actually the shaft this is the medial surface okay this is the medial surface this is the medial surface of the shaft all right now the lateral surface coming to the lateral surface of the olecranon process it is smooth okay it is smooth and continuous as the posterior surface of the shaft now just look at my finger okay so this is the lateral surface now if i trace it downwards see i'm actually where is it i'm actually going towards the posterior surface of the ulna okay so it continues as the posterior surface okay of the shaft now the superior surface in its posterior part shows a rough end area see this rough end area i mean this is the superior surface of the olecranon process this is its posterior part and here it is rough see here actually the triceps brachii is attached i will come to it later the attachment that's why it's very much rough okay now let's discuss about the coronoid process now see let's discuss about the coronoid process now the coronoid process it projects forwards from the shaft okay it's present just below the olecranon process okay the word coronoid it means i mean in greek it means crow's beak okay so it actually resembles the beak of a crow so that's why it's called a crow's beak i mean it's named after the crow's beak okay it projects forwards from the shaft and just below it the olecranon process is present now it has four surfaces okay so this is the superior surface of the coronal process this is the superior surface this is the anterior surface see this is the anterior surface this was the superior surface this is the medial surface and this is the lateral surface okay so superior anterior medial and lateral surface okay now the superior surface it forms the lower part of the trochlear notch okay this from the lower part of the trochlear notch and and the upper part of the trochlear notch was formed by the anterior surface of the olecranon process okay now the anterior surface see this anterior surface of the coronal process see the anterior surface is triangular rough and in its lower corner it forms the ulnar tuberosity so this is the ulnar tuberosity okay this is the ulnar tuberosity 
Now the upper part of the of its lateral surface is marked by the radial notch. So this is the radial notch which marks the I mean the upper part okay, of the lateral surface. So this is the lateral surface of the coronary process and in its upper part the radial notch is present. Okay. Now the annular ligament is attached to the anterior and posterior margins of this notch. Okay, the annular ligament actually when the superior radial nerve joint is formed okay so the annular ligament actually helps in forming the socket in which the head of the radius can articulate so this annular ligament is actually present in the anterior and posterior margins of this notch so this is the if i hold it in anatomical position see this is the anterior and this is the posterior margin so here the annular ligament will be present in this areas now the lower part of the lateral surface forms a depressed area to accommodate the radial tuberosity okay so this depression which you can see here it will accommodate the radial tuberosity so this is radial tuberosity so this is how it articles i mean this okay i hope you can appreciate this see all right so that depression is due to accommodate the radial tuberosity all right now the it is limited the lower part of the lateral surface it's actually limited by a see a ridge kind of thing now this is limited behind by this ridge called the supine intercrest so this ridge over here i hope you can observe it see this ridge this is the supinator ridge okay this ridge you see here so this is called a supinator ridge all right hey, sorry i mean the supinator crest so this is crest like so that's why it's called the supinator crest this ridge okay now the medial surface is continuous with the medial surface of the shaft so the medial surface of the coronary process is actually continuous with the medial surface of the shaft all right now i told you the trochlear notch forms the articular surface the articulates with the trochlea of the humerus to form the elbow joint okay and the head of the radius articulates with the capitula all right now the radial notch articulates with the radius to form the superior radial nerve joint now let's discuss about the shaft now let's discuss about the shaft okay the shaft of the ulna now the shaft has three borders and three surfaces respectively all right now first of all this is the lateral or the interosseous border okay this is the lateral or the interosseous border I hope it's visible this is the anterior border of the shaft and this is the posterior border of the shaft okay this is the posterior border okay so anterior lateral and the posterior border all right now let's discuss about the surfaces all right so it has three surfaces one is the anterior surface this is the anterior surface of the shaft this is the medial surface of the shaft and this is the posterior surface of the shaft okay anterior medial and the posterior surface okay now the interosseous or the lateral border is the sar sharpest of all okay so this is the most sharpest border and it is i mean it's prominent in the and it's most prominent in the middle two fourths okay in the middle two fourths see this crest like thing can be observed so this is the sharpest part of the lateral or interosseous border now inferiorly if we trace it it can be traced to the lateral side of the head okay and superiorly it is continuous with the supinator crest so superiorly it is continuous with the supinator crest and inferiorly it can be traced to the lateral side of the head all right now coming to the anterior border so this is the anterior border now the anterior border is thick and rounded okay it is thick and rounded and 
it begins above on the medial side of the ulnar tuberosity so this is the ulnar tuberosity and this is the medial side of it now it begins from here and it can be traced inferiorly okay it passes a bit backward in its lower one third see okay and it terminates at the medial side of the stylar process see it actually see see the full course see it starts from the medial side of the uh, ulnar tuberosity so if i trace it downwards see now it's ending up where in the medial side of the styloid process okay this is the medial side of the styloid process okay now the posterior border see this is a posterior border okay this is posterior border it is subcutaneous it begins at the apex of the triangular subcutaneous area at the back of the olecranon process see this is a triangular subcutaneous area okay it's starting from here then it can be traced this side see okay it starts actually from the apex of it of the apex of the triangular subcutaneous area and terminates at the base of the styloid process it is the base of the styloid process so that being said now let's discuss about the surfaces now the anterior surface which was this one this lies between the anterior and the interosseous border so this is the anterior and this is the interosseous border so in between these two borders will be this anterior surface okay now you may observe a nutrient foramen see this nutrient foramen i hope it's clear see i hope now it will be clear so there is a nutrient foramen which is directed upwards see put this area so this nutrient foramen is directed upwards which means then what will be the growing end of the bone the lower end will be the growing end of the bone just like radius now the radius also had a nutrient foramen see it should be in the anterior surface but it's present in the posterior surface see the anterior medial surface it should have been present but all all right it's present in the posterior surface see this nutrient foramen this was directed upwards which means the lower end was actually the growing end of the bone all right so similar to ulna all right similarly ulna also has the nutrient foramen directed upwards but the lower end is actually the growing end of the bone now the nutrient artery is actually derived from the anterior interosseous artery okay it is derived from the anterior anterior interosseous artery not from the posterior all right now the medial surface coming to the medial surface so this is the medial surface okay now the medial surface lies between the anterior and the posterior borders so it will lie between the anterior and the posterior border the medial surface okay now the posterior surface it actually lies between the the lateral or the interosseous border and the posterior border so this is the posterior surface okay now it is subdivided into three areas by two lines okay it's subdivided so it is subdivided into three areas by two lines see i want you to observe the posterior surface very clearly all right now it has an oblique line which divides it into upper and lower part see the oblique line there is a oblique line i hope it's visible this oblique line so it's dividing it into upper and lower halves all right and in the lower part it is further divided by a vertical line see this vertical line i hope it's visible so in the lower part it has a vertical line which divides the posterior surface into a medial and a lateral area okay so this is the lateral area and this will be the medial area so the posterior surface in its lower part is again divided into medial and lateral area all right now let's discuss about the lower end okay 
Now the lower end is made up of the head of the alna. So this is the head of the alna and the styloid process. So this is the styloid process and this is the head of the alna. Now the head articulates with the ulnar notch. So this is the ulnar notch of the radius. So the head articulates with the ulnar notch to form the inferior radio ulnar joint. Okay. Now it is separated from the wrist joint by an articular disc. Okay. So it is actually separated from the wrist joint by an articular disc. So this is very much important and the questions are asked from this part only that the head of the ulna does not participate in formation of the wrist joint okay so this is very important please note it down and please read it further from your books that the head of the ulna does not participate in formation of the wrist joint it is the articular disc and uh, and the lower surface i mean inferior surface of the radius which which is in articulation i mean which is in which helps in the formation of the wrist joint not the head of the ulna okay now in the anterior aspect of the head of the ulna the ulnar artery and nerve lies okay the ulnar artery and nerve lies in the anterior aspect of the head of the ulna now you can see here the styloid process now the styloid process projects downwards from the posterior medial side i told you earlier so it lies in the posterior medial side of the lower end of the ulna now posteriorly between the styloid process and the head of the ulna see there is a groove okay now this groove will actually uh, lodge the tendon of the extensor carpi ulnaris so while i mean while discussing about the radius i told you that there are four prominent grooves on the radius then the fifth groove is formed in the junction between the radius and the ulna near the inferior radio ulnar joint and the sixth groove was in the ulna so they are actually taking part in the formation of the extensor retinaculum of the wrist okay the extensor retinaculum of the wrist now this tendons okay so these tendons are really very important so you must know it now the sixth groove here over here in the ulna it will lodge the tendon of the extensor carpi ulnaris all right now that being said now let's discuss about the attachment of the ulna now let's discuss about the attachments in relation to the ulna all right now first of all the superior surface of the olecranon process in its posterior part so there was a roughened area i hope you remember now this roughened area it provides the attachment of the triceps brachii so the triceps brachii is inserted into this rough posterior part of the superior surface of the olecranon process okay and the anterior part of the surface is generally covered by a bursa all right which actually forms the elbow point now the brachialis so the brachialis muscle is inserted into the anterior surface of the coronary process so this was the coronary process and this is its anterior surface so in the anterior surface of the coronary process the brachialis was inserted i mean is inserted okay including the ulnar tuberosity so the anterior surface of the coronary process including the ulnar tuberosity will insert the brachialis muscle okay next let's come to the supinator okay now the supinator arises from the supinator crest so this was the supinator crest in the lateral part okay in the lateral side of the uh, coronary process now the supinator uh, muscle arises from the supinator crest and from the triangular area in front of the crest okay yeah i will show you it in the diagram okay so this is actually a triangular area in front of the crest so here will be the supinator all right because in this side the anconius will be attached i will come to it now the ulnar head of the flexor digitorum superficialis you remember flexor digitorum superficialis it was also in relation to the radius okay so it was also in relation to the radius in the anterior surface 
all right now the flexor the digital and superficialis i mean the other head of it it arises from the tubercle at the upper end of the medial margin of coronoid process so over here okay so this tubercle is actually called the sublime tubercle okay actually because it gives attachment of the sublimus muscle so this is called the sublime tubercle now what happens is the ulnar head of the flexor digitorum superficialis it arises from the tubercle at the upper end of the medial margin of the coronary process all right now the ulnar head of the pronated teres it also arises from the medial margin of the coronary process the ulnar head of the pronated teres okay now let's discuss about one major muscle which actually lies okay in the upper three fourth of the ante uh, of the anterior and medial surfaces of the shaft okay now in the upper three fourth so what does it mean over here okay now in the upper three fourth from the anterior and the medial surface of the shaft so this muscle is actually the flexor digitorum profundus okay the flexor digitorum profundus now it arises from the upper three fourths of the anterior and medial surface of the shaft okay so this you must remember so this is one important major muscle found in the anterior surface okay i mean the anterior aspect now the posterior border of the shaft okay now this is the posterior border of the shaft now in the posterior border of the shaft over here here actually lies i mean it there is a aponeurosis which actually runs through this aponeurosis is actually running through all of this border and it gives origin to two important muscles one is the flexor carpi ulnaris and one is the extensor carpi ulnaris okay the flexor carpi ulnaris and the extensor carpi ulnaris okay so one important point about the flexor digitorum profundus as well that apart from i mean being attached with the anterior and the medial surface of the shaft it's also in relation to the medial surface of the coronary process here as well okay that you must remember now i told you about the posterior border that aponeurosis runs all over it so now let's come to the pronated quadratus okay now the pronated quadratus which was also in relation to the radius i hope you remember in the anterior surface in the lower end in this triangle radio okay so just like that the pronator quadratus takes origin from the oblique ridge on the lower part of the anterior surface okay so this is the anterior surface and there is the oblique ridge okay over here so over here it will give origin to the okay it will give origin to the pronator quadratus in this oblique ridge now in the medial side of the olecranon process over here okay in the medial side of the olecranon process one important muscle is arises from it so that is called the flexor carpi ulnaris okay now the ulnar head of the flexor carpi ulnaris arises from the medial side of the olecranon process okay and it also arises from the posterior border as well now similarly the extensor carpi ulnaris it arises from the posterior border okay the extensor carpi ulnaris the flexor carpi ulnaris arises from the medial side of the olecranon process okay and the extensor carpi ulnaris it arises from the posterior border now one important muscle called the anconius is inserted into the lateral aspect of the olecranon process okay so in the lateral aspect of the olecranon process okay the anconius muscle is actually attached okay now i told you about the anconius which was present in the lateral aspect of the olecranon process over here okay now it also arises from the posterior border all right i mean sorry not the posterior border itself but the upper one fourth of the posterior surface okay so from the upper one fourth of the posterior surface the anconius muscle is attached so it is inserted into the lateral aspect of the olecranon process and it's also in relation to the upper one fourth of the posterior surface now the lateral part of the posterior surface okay so this is the posterior surface of the ulna 
now in the sorry this is the posterior surface of the ulna all right this is actually the medial surface so the this is the posterior surface of the ulna now in the lateral part of the posterior surface okay in the lateral part of it i hope you remember that there is a vertical line which is divided it into lateral and medial surfaces okay into the medial and the lateral surfaces so in the lateral part of it or the posterior surface it gives origin from above downwards to three important muscles in the lateral part okay or the posterior surface so the first one is the abductor pollicis longus extensor pollicis longus and the extensor indices i repeat again from above downwards remember we are moving from above to downwards okay so in the lateral part of the posterior surface so first we have the over here will be the the abductor pollicis longus the extensor pollicis longus and the extensor indices okay abductor pollicis longus extensor pollicis longus and the extensor indices so i will show it to you in in through a diagram okay so it will be very much clear now the interosseous membrane is attached to the interosseous border okay the lower three fourths i mean it's in relation to the radius as well okay the interosseous membrane now the oblique cord is attached to the ulnar tuberosity okay now, the oblique cord is present to, uh, over here okay the ulnar tuberosity now the capsular ligament of the elbow joint is attached to the margins of the trochlear notch so this is a trochlear notch now the margins of the trochlear notch will represent the capsular ligament of the elbow joint okay that is to the coronary and the olfinary processes so i told you about the oblique cord which is in attached to the ulnar tuberosity the capsular ligament okay and one more is the annular ligament of the superior radial nerve joint so which is attached to the two margins of the radio radial notch of the ulna so the here th three important additional i mean the articulating muscles which is in relation to both the radius and ulna is the oblique cord which is attached to the sorry which is attached to the ulnar tuberosity the capsular ligament of the elbow joint which is attached to the margins of the trochlear notch okay oblique cord capsular ligament of the trochlear i mean the elbow joint capsular ligament of the elbow joint and the annular ligament which is in relation to the anterior and posterior margins of the radio ulnar superior radial joint okay it is attached to the margins of the radial notch now the ulnar collateral ligament okay of the wrist is attached to the stylar process so in the stylar process will be attached the ulnar collateral ligament all right next discussing about the articular disc now the articular disc of the inferior radial nerve joint is attached to its apex to a small rough end area just lateral to the stylar process over here okay so it will be the articular disc so i repeat again the head of the ulna itself does not participate in the formation of the wrist joint it's the articular disc okay so now let's discuss about the attachments through this diagram okay so this is a diagram i think you know it it's from the bd chaurasia's first edition of upper limb okay now we will first discuss the anterior aspect of the ulna then the posterior aspect okay now first in the anterior aspect we just discussed about this capsular ligament which is attached to the margins of the olecranon and ecotonoid process okay so this is a capsular line next is the flexor digitorum superficialis which is present in the medial surface okay and of the coronary process and the pronator teres as well okay next is the oblique cord okay which was present in relation to the ulnar tuberosity so it's attached it is in relation to both the ulna and the radius you can see it from the diagram okay next is the flexor digitorum profundus which was present in the anterior as well as some part of the medial surface okay so this was the flexor digitorum profundus okay in the three fourths and the anterior three fourth next was the pronator quadratus muscle in the anterior aspect okay i mean in the oblique ridge which was present in the lower end 
okay this is the pronated quadratus now here is one more capsular line okay in which the uh, capsule will be formed i mean it will actually lead in the formation of that capsule which is in relation to the wrist joint okay now let's discuss about the posterior aspect and the posterior aspect in the posterior surface of the superior part of the molecular process we had the attachment of the i mean the insertion of the triceps to okay now the blue marks are for the insertion and the red marks are for the origin okay now next to it in the lateral surface okay we had the anconius muscle the lateral surface of the coronal process okay next so i told you that in the medial surface as well the flexor digitorum profundus was attached okay now the flexor digitorum profundus a tendon of it also i mean is also in relation to the posterior borders okay in the aponeurysis see this is the aponeurysis for flexor carpi ulnaris this green part the extensor carpi ulnaris and the flexor digitorum profundus okay this aponeurysis now in the lateral aspect of the posterior surface in the lateral surface we had three important muscles which we discussed one is the abductor pollicis longus next was the extensor pollicis longus and the third was the extensor indices abductor pollicis longus extensor pollicis longus and extensor indices so i hope you remember during the discussion of the radius i showed you this diagram so this you can correlate with it that the abductor pollicis longus is also in relation to the medial border of the i mean in the medial aspect of the posterior surface of the radius okay so and this extensor pollicis brevis is a different one so here is the extensor pollicis longus and here was the extensor pollicis brevis in case of radius and this is the extensor indices okay and this is the capsular line in the lower end okay so this was pretty much about the uh, ulna which we discussed today so i hope you learned well so thanks for watching